the geology of Rome. When we want to start with our examination of Rome, we have to look at the geology. And we have to understand the strong relationship that Rome has with the Alban Hills. It's not just the fact that Romulus and Remus are born in the Alban Hills and are abandoned, eventually going to be founding the city of Rome, but it's also the fact that the Alban Hills constitute a grouping of volcanoes. Most people don't know it, but the hills of Rome are here because of volcanoes. No eruptions, no Rome. Although those volcanoes are extinct today, Half a million years ago, they were quite active, up until about 20,000 years ago. And what those volcanoes did was belch forth enormous amounts of ash and debris that ultimately was deposited in the plains around the Tiber River, even the Paleo Tiber River, because over time, the course of the Tiber River has shifted south and west to where it is today. And those deposits are what we call the hills of Rome. You have to go out to Monte Mario to look at and have a geologically formed hill. All the other famous hills of Rome, the Palatine, the Capitoline, the Esquiline, the Caelian, the Apatine, these are all deposits of ash. We can get a sense of the deposition of ash in various periods when we look at the base of the Capitoline Hill. This is not the only place to understand the volcanic nature of Rome, but it's one of the best. And you can see multiple layers of accretions of eruptions from half a million years ago. When we're talking about geology, we must talk about tuff this volcanic stone. And what it is, is the accretion of ash deposited from the eruptions from the Alban Hills 30 kilometers away. And this material, as it hardens, becomes ample building material for the ancient Romans, for ashlar blocks, for eventually cutting into, for catacomb tunnels, and also for aggregate in the mixture of cement. Also, being on top, you were safe and you were protected, and then you could control the access across the Tiber River. So it was an ideal place to live and found the city for so many reasons. But we have to realize that when we start talking about Rome and its geology, we have to think volcanoes. We're very much aware of the alluvial deposits that occur also in areas underneath much of the city of Rome that ultimately challenge many of the later imperial monuments when there are earthquakes. Those earthquakes also being related to the existence of the volcanoes in the Alban Hills. And we want to think then that with those ash deposits, and these mounds 40 or 50 meters high, that over time they're formed into these hills or individual mounds by water. The Tiber River, the aquifers in abundance throughout the city, and the tributaries of the Tiber carved through the valleys and greatly affected the landscape of ancient Rome. We've got to imagine too that the Tiber River was much more present in your daily existence. Today with the big flood walls of the unification of Italy, we don't really live the Tiber. We simply cross over it here and there. But in ancient times, it was much more volatile, it was much wider, and it influenced and affected your life down in the valleys much more frequently. The dynamic between Rome and the river has changed dramatically with the construction in the 19th century of these massive flood walls, forever isolating the life on the Tiber River from life in the city of Rome. Obviously, the dynamic was very different in ancient times, and so was the flooding, very infrequent, though it was destructive. With the passing of time, the Middle Ages and beyond, there have been more frequent floodings, and it was necessary in the 19th century to put a definitive stop to that flooding, hence the flood walls. But they really do isolate the Tiber River and any kind of life on the Tiber River from your life in Rome today. In fact, a lot of people come to Rome and don't even notice the Tiber River. We can look at reconstructions of the earlier city of Rome. We can look at geological studies of early Rome and understand that the hills over time have been cut back, have been reduced, and of course the valleys over time have been filled in with debris, mostly man-made. So the hills of Rome don't feel so steep as they once were. They're not so high as they once were. It's really oftentimes difficult to distinguish even, let's say, the Quirinal from the Viminal Hill because the valley in between, over time, has filled in. And to get a sense of the fill, the man-made fill, that has been distributed throughout the city, and we're talking about Rome being built of layers and much of the original geology disappearing, we have to think that over this entire area of about 3,000 acres, you have the deposition of man-made material on the scale of approximately 93 million cubic meters. So imagine that that is what the archaeologist has to go through. We ask ourselves when we look down on those pits that have been revealing the ancient monuments, 
what is that stuff that's been dug out around those ancient monuments that made them disappear? It's man-made fill. As Romans change the original environment and the original geology, they're making a new landscape. And that landscape over the centuries has changed and modified our understanding and our view of the city of Rome. It is fundamental to understand the geology of ancient Rome. It was a great resource for the Romans. It's the reason why Rome is where it is today. And of course, the geology of Rome still challenges the people who live in the city and the city and its structures themselves.